Hello, I'm Ed Eden, Director of Respiratory Therapy and Pulmonary Function Labs at a Mount Sinai Hospital, New York City, part of a large hospital system that competes for patients. In collaboration with Primary Care, I'm spearheading an initiative to reduce hospital readmissions for COPD. Readmissions for COPD have become a major issue for hospitals in the United States. As part of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, the federal government regards readmissions within 30 days of discharge as an indicator of premature discharge and poor quality. Hospitals are penalized by a reduction in reimbursement based on a comparison of observed versus expected readmission profile for similar hospitals in the area. The graduated penalty is of 1 to 3 percent of reimbursement depending on the ratio. This somewhat conflicts with the traditional focus on reducing the length of stay as a necessity of the prospective payment scheme that reimburses a fixed amount for diagnosis irrespective of the number of days in the hospital. Not only must discharge be rapid, but now also safe. Analysis of Medicare data, the public insurance plan for seniors, indicates that 11% of all readmissions occur within the first two days of discharge, rising to approximately 20% within the first week. Is the government's presumption correct? Is the readmission rate for COPD that runs nationally at about 20 to 25 percent a sign of fractured care? And can it be prevented or reduced? And at what cost? In order to answer these questions, hospitals are scrambling to determine why a quarter of patients with COPD are readmitted so quickly. The causes are complex and multifactorial. Interpretation of these fingers, however, may be confounded. Whether the readmission is actually due to COPD or not, it is still counted as a COPD readmission. In our inner city hospital, 75% of all readmissions for COPD have a non-pulmonary diagnosis, suggesting comorbidities are a major cause. COPD is a systemic and inflammatory condition and comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease, psychiatric illness, obesity, diabetes, frailty and arthritis are common. Studies indicate that over 50% of patients with COPD have four or more comorbidities. Coding based on medical record documentation may not be accurate in our study, about 30% of patients discharged with a diagnosis of COPD had restrictive physiology on pulmonary function testing. Inaccurate disease coding at discharge may lead to the overdiagnosis of COPD, which is a convenient diagnostic label for those admitted with shortness of breath. Confirmation of airflow obstruction with pulmonary function testing is difficult at bedside. Overlap syndromes muddy the waters even more. We have reported that a small number of patients with COPD and coexistent obstructive sleep apnea or obesity hypoventilation are frequently readmission, readmitted with respiratory symptoms. Resource allocation varies according to leadership focus, business plans and hospital bottom line. With value-based purchasing replacing volume-based reimbursement, the successful cost and quality management of large populations in the states becomes paramount. Newer strategies include a seamless transitioning of the patient from inpatient to outpatient, a process that traditionally has not been well developed in the US. The adoption of electronic medical records Another feature of the ACA, with associated checklists, templates and quality indicators, offers the potential for improving and standardizing patient care and communication. Silo specialty care is no longer adequate and 
In the United States, barriers are breaking down with the growth and strengthening of primary care and medical homes. The pressure to reduce readmissions leads to the development of new programs that may or may not be developed from system data based on effectiveness. Patients are tracked through repeated admissions or ED visits in our hospital and in other system hospitals. Once identified, these patients receive focused management tailored to their needs. And once admitted, strategies for these patients include a checklist approach with bedside education by respiratory and physiotherapy, early specialist and primary care office appointments, direct referral to smoking cessation and pulmonary rehabilitation, and the delivery of medications before discharge. It does make sense that a patient should know how to use an MDI, but we still do not know whether it makes a difference to prevent rehospitalization. In my practice with an inner city population in New York, fighting for breath, panic, social isolation and cultural issues dominate the emotional covering of patients with COPD and may lead to readmission. The patient who says they are not ready to go home is usually not ready. Well-planned home support is essential for safe discharge and has been shown to reduce readmissions. And finally, although the success of these programs would be expected to vary, the government's initiative to reduce readmissions, which is now being adopted by private insurance plans, is providing a strong impetus for innovation and quality care. And I believe this process will be successful in leading to seamless primary and specialty care to improve the patient experience and prevent readmission. Thank you.